Well, welcome back to the Sharon Moore Show. Today I'm here at the Los Angeles Equestrian Center celebrating the Fiesta Annual Charity Show. It's about horses. Today on the Sharon Moore Show. Hello, sir. How are you? Doing good, thank you. I'm here talking with Michelle. Am I saying that right? Yes. Michelle. Michelle, I want to talk about the fear of horses. Most people, are, some people are, uh, that I've spoken with are afraid of riding horses. What do you say of that? You know, I think it's about knowing them or not knowing them. As soon as you know uh, an animal and you can, uh, you can know uh, what will be his behavior uh, before he does it, you know, you become more confident with uh, with those animals. So with the horses, it's like that. You know, as soon as you know them, you become less fear from them. But it's normal to be fear when you don't know them because they are big animals. They have, they can overreact and thing like that, and they are way way stronger and uh, and heavier and taller than than us. So it's normal to be fear. What do you do if a horse started? like going crazy while you're riding them and bucking and stuff. What do you do? It's just uh, uh, you need to be uh, more cool than them. And, and the, the horse is not, uh, is not a leader. So and you are a leader when you ride him. And so as soon as you get, uh, you get more cool, the horse will calm down and get, get cool as well. How did you start with horses? How did you start picking up horses and being involved in horses? 
Uh, I started that when I was a, a really young kid. I start. I was. Uh, I was six years old. You know, just uh, my parents want me to uh, want, wanted me to uh, to make uh, to make sport, and they uh, they asked me uh, uh, what you want to do, and uh, and I said I have horses close to my place, and I said I, I want to ride horses, and that was the, the, my beginning with horses. Beautiful horses, ladies. Thank you so much. I'm Thank doing a documentary on the fear of horses. What do you think of that? What do you tell people that are afraid of riding horses? Um, wear a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and get to know them on the ground first. Because it's, it, it's a big animal and you can get hurt. But they're also like big dogs if you let them be. So how do you approach them? I, I mean, how, how do you approach them that they won't be spooked or something? Come from the side. Their better vision is come slowly from the side so they can see you coming because they're near they're far sighted so they don't see as well up close so don't jump in their faces and they come better come up onto the neck make sure they can see you the whole time but this is a good place to start is right in here where you can't get kicked and you're less likely to, if, and ask the people if it's a friendly horse too some horses are really good with people and some are not you mind if I ask how long have you been riding horses I started when I was about 12 with a gap of years, so probably at least 25 years total. Yeah, well, thank you so much for letting me ask the questions, man. I greatly appreciate it. Well, I hope you get a chance to enjoy a ride someday. I'm too scared, I tell you. <laughs> Just start with petting. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs> wow, thank you so very much for sharing. Yeah, I, I could go on and on, but, but that's basically the, you know, the majority of problems that people have with horses. It's not understanding the horses. It's not understanding what, what, that the fact that they are big animals, they can shy, they're at, especially a young horse that hasn't been exposed to a lot of things. It was born, it's been on a ranch. Bit, oh, you know, they kept it in a small stall or corral. It's never been out. It's just like somebody taking you and dropping you off in the middle of China. Man, you're going to be freaked out. You're going to be looking around, you know. Oh, my God, you know, but these people are going to, you know, jump me, rob me or whatever, you know. And once you've been there a while and, and you, you know, you know the culture and everything, you feel safe. And you go, oh, yeah, I'm going to go over here and eat. I'm going to go over here and do that. It's, it's pretty much the same for these horses. You have to remember that horses have the capability of a person that's three years old. And a three-year-old person can do a lot of things. They can tease you, they can get upset at you. You know, a, a little three-year-old, people have habits of, every time they see their horse, they give them some carrots or a piece of apple or something. So every time this, that horse sees you, it recognizes you, comes running up to you. And all of a sudden, this day you have no carrots, no apples. <laughs> And it's pissed. Its ears are back, you know, and it's, where's my treat, you know? And he's, you know, not going to pay attention to you. He's going to give you a hard time. Just like a little three-year-old kid. All of a sudden, hey, Grandpa, where's my candy? Where's my dime? Where's my nickel? You know, I don't have any. Oh, I hate you, you know? <laughs> See all the routine? Yeah. And so that's the mentality they have. Mentality of a three-year-old. And, and a three-year-old can do a lot of things. A horse is anything like they are when we see them in the western movies yeah they, but don't forget those horses that you see that the cowboys come up and they take the reins and they wrap them around uh, uh the hitching posts you know with the bridle in their mouth and all that you got to train a horse to do that because if you do that you put that around and something makes it shy and it pulls back and then all of a sudden that bits in their mouth and it, it's hurting and they're trying to get away from it and they can just break their jaw they can hurt themselves so they get trained little by little to when there's no give to that rein that they go, okay, cool, I stop and I'll I won't move. 
I'll just stay right here. They have to be trained to do that. You don't just get on a horse, ride it over there. Oh, I'm going to tie it up over here and tie that reins around the post. And that horse backs up a little bit. And all of a sudden, he feels that bit in its mouth and it freaks out. Man, it's going to break my jaw. It's going to cut me. And they just panic. They blow up and that's when they end up, get up hurt. Instead of somebody taking their time, just kind of laying it over the post, you know, let him pull back and just kind of hold on to it a little bit, give and take. And after a while, it's not going to happen overnight, but some will pick it up faster than others. But once it, it uh, figures out that, oh, okay, you know what, that's going to hurt me, so I'm not backing up. You have to teach them everything, just like you have to do humans. You have to teach them everything. And that's basically it. Everything is in steps with animals. What do you think of a horse when they when they actually horse racing, like at Santa Anita or something, and they whipping them with that with that with that whip to go faster? What is what is that? Is that animal cruelty? What is that? No, no. You know what? It's a sport. Okay. There's a lot of money involved in these horses. They're worth millions of dollars just to get them to the track. It's like you know a couple thousand dollars a month to keep a horse in training. And uh, so all of a sudden people go, oh God, you know, they want to win. You know, that's the whole thing is to win. They bet, they make money. If it wins, then they can sell it for more money. If it's a breeding animal, then it's, it's, it's uh, stud feeds. If it's a colt, it gets higher. If it's a mare, uh, breeding her and her offspring become, if she's a champion mare, they become more valuable. Sometimes, you know, the horses are running and they're doing really good. And you can, some horses, they don't hardly have to whip because they're very competitive. They don't want to be behind anybody. So they will go faster to try to be in front. Other horses are a little lackadaisical. They're fast, but they go, you know what? I don't really want to get up there in the front. <laughs> I'm getting tired. And so they need a little incentive. And that's what the crop is for. You know, they, they, it's a crop. If you really look at it, it's not gonna hurt them. You know, when they get to the, if they use a crop that had metal or something really bad, when they got to the, to the finish line and if they saw welts on that horse, or if they saw, you know, they it cut it, the welt broke loose, cut, and it, uh, it bled, they would disqualify that horse. They would disqualify the rider and the owner. So it's, it's, it, it's just an encouragement thing when I'm training a horse, and a horse is, I do Western Pleasure, Hunter Pleasure, and, I, and the horse is acting up, he doesn't want to turn, he doesn't want to work on a loose, and I'll spin him around, and bend. you try to do, it's a pressure and release, you know. So I'm pull, pulling it one side, pulling it the other side, so come on, give, 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 give. And some of them, well, you know, after a while they go, okay, I'll give it. You know, I'd rather do that than to be spun or turn, turn in a circle or backed up. And then sometimes they get a little unruly, they start to rear up on you and something like that. And you might take a crop and smack them once in the butt, you know. Again, you don't want to smack them so much that it puts a welt on them because if you're going to show them and you're in a class and you got a welt on a horse, they'll ask you to leave the arena. So it's, it's not, yeah, if, if you're at home and you really got pissed off and everybody has temperaments and somebody really got carried away and really wailed on a horse, that would be cruelty, you know. But he's at home, nobody's around, we're reporting. And unfortunately, if he's training that horse for somebody and that owner happens to come by and see his horse has got full of welts and stuff, he's gonna say, oh, I'm pulling my horse out of here, this guy's too tough. So it kind of it kind of self-governs itself a little bit, you know. You can't be cruel to a horse. And those techniques don't work. You're forcing the horse to do something it doesn't want to do, so it starts to resent you. If you work around it, just like you're dealing with your kids, you know, trying to teach your kids algebra, and you, you know, and every time he gets the problem wrong, what do you do? You smack him, you lose your temper. God damn it, can't you get this through your head? You know, look at it, you know. And but if you just take your time, look. If you just let's just do this little part here, you know, and you know, plus and the minus, you know, you multiply that, it's going to be a minus, you know. The, and you start to explain it little by little and you keep them quiet and relax then all that information soaks into their brain if you get them too nervous and too uptight then they can't process it horses are the same way you know you get too into them too much you start getting on them really hard they can't process the stuff because they're just nervous. they're trying to defend themselves you know they no matter what you tell them to do they don't want to hear it because you know I'm 
Jesus, I don't know what I can do. This guy's beating on me. I don't know what the hell he wants. They lose it. So you have to go down, slow down, work with them little by little, and work them out of that problem. And sometimes if you just get a little bit of what you want going the right way, pet them, relax, and go away. Tomorrow's another day. And then you start out. So there's a knack to all that. None of it, there's no quick fix to get a horse to perform. You sound like you've been dealing with horses a long time. <laughs> like probably close to 50 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do, you, do you think a horse really wants us to ride them? Well, I think, Is that the case? Yeah, because they were bred for that. Oh, really? I didn't know Yeah, that. the horses were bred. You know, um, they, the way it starts out, you know, even I do Arab, mostly Arabian horses. And uh, the Arabian horses, you know, they can handle a lot more things with humans because of the fact they were bred by the nomads in the desert. And in the desert, the tribesmen wanted to keep them separated from the other tribes that were stalled, you know, had their little campsite a little ways away. And so they would keep all their valuable mares and stuff. They would keep them in the tents. And the horses that could handle the tents and, and the confinement are the ones that got bred because they had the temperament that they wanted. And they also fed them grains because they don't have alfalfa fields out there. So they have a lot of dates and grains and stuff like that. So Arabian horses can handle a lot of high protein stuff, a lot of grains and stuff, and not get founder in their legs. Founder is kind of like a person getting gout, you know, when they eat too many rich foods and stuff. And they get now quarter horses are totally different. That's a breed that was bred in, in the West to handle cattle. They're tough horses. They, they don't have any problem going in there, moving those cows and running into them, you know, not, not being scared of them. And the ones that could do that job well got bred, and the ones that couldn't didn't get bred. So I can ask you a question. What's the name of the horse? Burladero. What is it? Burladero. What does that mean? Uh, I don't know. He came from Portugal. With that, with that name. Oh, what kind of horse is it? Lusitano. Mexicano? No, Lusitano. <laughs> Lusitano. Uh -huh. Now I saw when you was back there, the horse looked like it was a little spooked. Did it see something that's scary or something? Uh, he spooked with the trees. Oh, the trees? Yeah, it was really windy, so. Is 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 this a jumping horse? No, a dressage. No? No. What kind of horse is this in terms of industry? English dressage. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate okay. it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Can you just wave bye to the camera?
Can I ask you what is the horse name? Chip. Chip. Now why did you name the horse Chip? Because he's got a diamond chip on his nose. He has ah. a registered name called the Magistrate, but he has a diamond chip on his nose. Is, is this a jumping horse? Now what does the what does what for the for the for us that don't know what does that mean saddlebred? And they're from Kentucky, American saddlebred, and they were used in the Civil War to roam the plantations. And they're gated horses. Jumpers are not gated. Gated means they have four gates. Gates that they are closed in. No gates, how they move. Oh, okay. Like walk, trot, canter. Okay. What do you think of people's fear of horses and are kind of afraid because they're going to get kicked or thrown off of them? How, how, do, you, how do you approach a horse that you want to begin to learn and ride a horse? Um, people that are afraid of horses just haven't been around them enough. There's ways to learn to be around horses, but you have to be around them a lot. And horses are gentle souls. They don't want to hurt anybody. It's only when they get afraid, if somebody gets too close that they don't know, or somebody moves in the wrong way and it scares them, they don't want to hurt. They're, they're very gentle animals. What do, what do you say for the people that look at the, the, Chris, the Chris Reed stories and things like that? What do, you, what do you say to those people? This is a dangerous sport. Like many sports, it's a dangerous sport. There's a lot of sports that kids can get hurt, people can get hurt in. Scuba divers can drown. People who play football can get concussions and broken backs. It's a safe, it's a, there's a danger element to it. You have to really love it to do it. That's why we wear all this equipment, the helmets and everything like that. I thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, sir. Bye-bye. As well, you too, ma'am. Bye-bye, horsey. <laughs> Would you ever train a person to be a, a not a rider professionally, but just coming from the fear and the not having the knowledge of we knowing all? I do it all the time. Wow. I do it all the time. Yeah, it's just a matter. You start out. You don't. You know. You take. You get your quietest horse. That's well broke. It's quiet. Walk. Trot. Lope. You teach him how to sit in the saddle. You teach him how to cue the horse if you want it to walk, trot, or lope. You know, and it's. Much easier to teach a person how to ride on a polished horse because when the horse, when if I say trot your horse and the horse lopes off, I know it wasn't the horse, it was the rider. It gave it the wrong signal and that's why he loped off. He got nervous, squeezed him or whatever and asked him to go. When you read, ride a horse to learn, it's invisible cues. You can, it's like me driving this car, you know, you, you drive a period. What happens when you teach somebody to drive that hasn't driven before and they're going to make a turn, you know, <laughs> okay? And after a while, you just kind of, mm, mm, you know, it's all a feel. It's a feel of it, when, to, how much to turn, how much, to, how much to squeeze and all that. And the more you ride and the more you learn how to sit correctly on a saddle, the easier it becomes. Okay, I gotta say last question, and this is I mean the last question. Okay. You ever seen the horses dancing? You ever seen the horses when they do like some of the dance moves and they bow their head and all that? Yeah. Is that stuff true? I've yes, seen it, it in, in yeah. some of the parades. It's training. It's all it is is training. Same way that how many kids are born that can uh, do backflips, front flips, <laughs> go up in the air, <laughs> do twists and gymnastics? They weren't born that way. We're trained. Learn how to control their body, how to move, how to do all those things. They're trained that way. Same way with the horses. They're trained to do that. And you, there's certain ways you train them to get them to understand that. Okay, that's what I want you to do. And usually if you just get a couple of steps, you reward the horse. Yep, that's it. You go on with something else. And later you might come back and try it again. So after a while, that horse goes, geez, you know what? Every time I sit there and dance or bring those legs up, he cues me by touching my sides, holding the reins, and then he stops and he rewards me. 
and then after a while it just gets long. He does it not just two steps, four steps, five steps. Now he's going around the whole arena doing that. It's not any different than training a person to do gymnastics, uh, swimming, anything. It's all it is. Train, 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 train. Do an apple do a, do a horse like apples more than anything else? Or what are some of the they foods? They like anything that's sweet. Oh, sweet stuff. Sweet stuff. Anything that tastes good, you know. Uh, you know, you, you can't give it broccoli and think it's going <laughs> to like that. But you, you know, you give it some apple or, or uh, oranges are probably too wet, you know. Mm -hmm. But then uh, apples and, and carrots are their favorites. Carrots. Yeah. I right, thank you so much for okay. spending the time with me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Just tell me your name one more time and just. C Cecil Martinez. And we just wave by to the audience. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good. What do you what do you think of that? What do you think of people having being afraid of horses? If you know how to handle them, you don't need to be afraid. Accidents happen, unfortunately. But so, if you're careful with the horse and the horse knows you, that's okay. Just need to wear a helmet. Have you ever had a horse kick you? No. Never. Really? No. So do you actually ride the horses too? No, she does. Yeah, she won't talk to me. <laughs> I'm getting that on camera too. <laughs> That's gonna be funny. I ri I rode horses before. Now I don't ride them. Well, let me say let me say thank you so very much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. Well, there you have it. So many great horses. So many beautiful people. I thank you so much for joining me here at the Sharon Moore Show at the Los Angeles Equestrian Center.